Oh, okay, and continuing on the, what's known commonly as the Ten, Ten Commandments, we're going to refer to a document um, uh, known as, or generally speaking, it's called, it's in this volume called the, the Gnostic Scripture. And the only other brother out there who really pointed to it was... Um, Bobby Hemet. Um, I really would advise one to check out. Um, there's a series that Bobby Hemet did, and he it says, "What if the God that you worship, I think something like, like was the God that you worship is the devil or something like that?" And he was pointing to the some of the Gnostic interpretations of the scripture, but of course he was putting it in the way that many of us can overstand those of us who are into um, Christ consciousness and already recognize some of the historical um, follies and lies that have been circulated concerning um, black people in times past as well as in times present. But if we want to know how did the world and how did things get the way that they are today, we have to study, we have to know our roots. And people, without a knowledge of their roots, it, is, is, it perish. It's like a tree that doesn't have any roots. It, it cannot stand. And as a people, we are not in a, in a standing position, yet the true remnant, the true church of Rastafari, yet the true church of God, and his Christ, our black Lord and Savior, is definitely on the rise. And this is this is a global phenomenon. As we said that we we, we minister to brothers and sisters globally. I mean, it's still a few, you know, it's still a few by comparison to the many that have gone astray, but still we give thanks to those who have confirmed and verified the true word and the true interpretation of scripture because it says that in this last day, in these last days, there will be a remnant. So we pray and we see ourselves as being of that remnant, not the only ones, but of that remnant because only our Father, only Kadus Avatachin, only Abba Kadus knows who's who for sure, what each of us must do as the scripture says, is to work out our salvation. So there's, there's, there's a duty that's associated with this grace that we have. But the key is the scriptures. The key is the Bible because the Bible gives us the, the testimony. So we're, we are learning the testimony and the record. So here... In the Gnostic, um, the Gnostic Bible, there is a very interesting letter, and this letter is called, um, this letter, I think, is a letter to, the, the epistle is Ptolemy's Epistle to Flora, something known as Ptolemy's Epistle to uh, flora, and this is this is what we're talking about right here. Now, how does this connect with uh, Mish Mishpatim? How does this connect with Mishpatim? Is there a connection with Mishpatim? Well, Mishpatim. There's a connection with Mishpatim, and there's a connection with um, with last uh, last week. So the previous segment. Because we say Vamarinya, not weak, but Samint is what we refer to those seven days that comprise what in the West is a week, or for us, from Shabbat to Shabbat. The Shabbat is the close of the week, Sunday, Ihud is the first day, and so we have seven, 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 seven days, basically. But seven is very important, as many of you probably already know. It's a number quite um consistently used in um, the Bible, in spirituality, in the book of Revelation, concerning the 
the, the seven seals and man, it, it has a great significance as well as in this this um in this present time that we're in, in these last days. So the last days are seven as well. The last days are seven. As we spoke of before, we're going to tell ones when the end will come. The end will come suddenly. That's the day, the hour, the time. That's not, we're not going to know the day, the hour, the time. But what we do know is that it will occur suddenly and there will be signs in heaven and on earth and among men and people that will demonstrate how close the time is. But prophetically speaking, the last days are also in sevens. So just a little bit more on the sevens, the importance of the sevens. Then we're going to learn that the in this particular sabbatical portion, number 18, which is known as Mish 14, and um, once again, once again, um, let's just refer to this right here. Let's see, do we have a a pointer right here? All right. So we so here's where we're at. Here's where we're at. All right, this is where we're at. So it's this right here that we read and study. This is at seventeen. All right, so, I mean seventeen and eighteen, but seventeen and eighteen are connected, as we tried to mention in the previous um, posting on Mishpor team on Rastafari. I think we titled it. Rastafari Mish 14. Now we want to discuss is the tripartite nature of of what's known as the commandment. What really uh, confuses a lot of folks, especially Gentiles or ones who come from a, a a Gentile misunderstanding. What really confuses them when they're in the New Testament and they have no groundation or foundation in the old is concerning um, what is meant by law what is meant by law. In fact, even when certain Christians say that the law was done away with, what they don't recognize is that not the pure law of God, his moral law has not been done away with, but the ceremonial law, which consisted in, in, in the ordinances concerning sacrifices, concerning so-called animal sacrifices, that that was done away with. And therefore, in Rastafari revelation, there is a, a um, consciousness of, 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 of a, liberty, a, a liberty consciousness of food. What foods? Like no debtors. You understand? Because the animal, the consumption of the animals was not, the Almighty's original will, but He permitted it. It was permissive, you understand, know, because of the fallen condition and state of human beings. And the idea of the animal sacrifices was also um, part of this plan of salvation to, to, to teach man and to educate humanity. So, Animal sacrifices at one time for, from a, in a dispensation was permitted, you see, because the perfect man and the perfect sacrifice, you understand, had not yet been fulfilled. But now, hallelujah, Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, hath come and has manifested you understand, and fulfilled, therefore, the sacrifices are done away with. And this is what the book of Hebrews powerfully explains, that in order to restore us into the family of God, in order to restore fallen humanity into the family of divinity, the Son of God, the Bain Ha Elohim, had to 
come forward and had to fulfill and do. And this is the testimony that we keep. Now, in Revelation, there's something very interesting in the book of Revelation. And let's see if we can get um, our scripture right here. And we're still in Torah, Sabbatical country. You know, we're still in this Torah portion, 18. Let's, let's call it 17 and 18. Because without a good foundation in 17, the Torah portion 17, which is chapters, um, Exodus chapters, I think, uh, 18 to chapter uh, uh, 20. And now we're in 21 to chapter 24. Um, contains the same theme and the same idea. Now, we spent some time on Yotor. And if you've looked at the previous videos, and if you've seen those videos, you can see that we we was we continued on speaking of this of this um this uh, organization or or uh, uh, jurisdiction actually jurisdiction was given because Moses took that responsibility on himself, and although he was willing. And we know he was able to do it. His Ethiopian father-in-law cautioned him and warned him that if you do this with the people so great, you understand, and having so great issues, you understand, you will wear yourself out and you will wear the people out. And if he were to do that, that would be a way to um, interfere and fail the Almighty. You understand? And fail the Almighty. This is why it says to be to be wise. You understand? We have to be wise and recognize, even I and I self, I know that I have a love for this. You understand? And love for teaching and love for community and even for fellowshipping and, and answering every phone call from brothers and sisters that come forward. But then I know basically a lot of y'all have to get suited up and booted up, trained and sent out, and also to do your part in what your particular gifts and calling are for the kingdom as well. But all of that is based on the prerequisite. And what is that prerequisite? The prerequisite is the basic, having a basic masaret, a basic foundation, a basic teaching. Even in our old Hebraic or Jewish um, society before we came down into this confusion and enslavement and 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 curse for disobedience you see being enslaved in the Americas in the Caribbean was a part of a, a divine punishment as well as a fulfillment of his word and the punishment we and our ancestors brought on ourselves just like right now one of the punishments still upon us is this disunity, this organization is still living betwixt and between. We're in the twilight zone right now, you know, between the old world, you understand, the white supremacy, the Gentile world domination, the counterfeit church, and the new world, you understand, the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. So although we will pray for fire bun Babylon and Babylon need to Babylon destruction now hot of fire. The Almighty knows that our time is is now. It is actually past in a sense. You see what I'm saying? But in his mercy, you see, in his mercy waiting for the 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 seed, waiting for that generation, waiting for 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 those who will be called, you understand, and those who will choose, you understand, and then prove by what they do to be faithful, that remnant, the Almighty is still looking for that number, that remnant, and he's not going to snap his finger like some idiots say, well, he's God, he can just snap his fingers, no, he gave us free will, you see what I'm saying, he gave us free will, and he's not going to violate his will, you understand, um, taking away our free will, you know but he will appeal to us. He will give us opportunity to consider, you know and if we choose amiss and choose falsely and he judges us, that means we have had before us 
the ability to choose right. So the fault is not Jah's, but the fault is our own. So in this portion right here that we're in, we're talking on and we're speaking on the commandments. We're speaking on the commandments, but, but why are we um, speaking on the commandments? There's something very interesting that is um, that is uh, said in the that is said in, in in the word. You know, it says that those who overcome the overcome. What is very interesting and unique about the overcomers is they have paid. First of all, they are kedusan. Kedusan. What does kedus? Kedus mean holy. Kedusan mean holy ones. What constitutes holiness? When one separates themselves to the Almighty for the Almighty's will. You understand? They are holy. They are saints. The true meaning of saints, not the counterfeit. You understand? Um, Antichrist church or, 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 or counterfeit Christianity, fake Christianity. No, it's not speaking about their their sainthood is made of man. What we're speaking about in sainthood is of Jah, is of God, because His word, His word is what. You see what I'm saying? In the beginning was the Word. We begin, the logic, the logistics for us is the Word. So although we have certain tactical um, challenges upon us, you know, the tactical challenges is that we're here, other brothers and sisters are over there, other ones are over there, um, some might have this advantage where they're at, others have that advantage, but we still are scattered, what will unite us and bring us together is our faith, is our love, is, is, is our, our working and praying, you understand, and this will give us the, the, the divine authority, you understand, to be restored as a people and to build our community, but most of all to come out of Babylon. You know, we don't have to wait on a United Nations program, a, a special government project or something like that. No, we uh, depend and even depend, Yovas, on our divine heritage. Our divine heritage, that's what it's all about. Many of the brothers and sisters, unfortunately, um, are too secularized, you know, and not spiritualized. They have secular knowledge, but they lack the spiritual foundation of the King of Kings. And His Majesty's Word bears witness against them, as well as all of us, you understand, know who continue to make our wills not obedient. And there's a judgment, you know, there's a serious judgment when that number is fulfilled, you see. But we are priests and, 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 and kings or a, a kingdom of the priesthood. This is revelation territory. Some would say, oh, the priest thing, that's Old Testament. No, it's, it's New Testament, you understand. Know it has been renewed restored in and through our high priest, in and through our black Lord and Savior, Adonenu Yeshua Ha Moshiach, Jesus Christos, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. But we know him as our black Lord and Savior. In other words, for us, Christ is an Ethiopian, an Afro-Shemite, a black man. Yes, he's one of us, but that in itself does not guarantee us salvation because he's black and not white, because he's woolly, he's not blonde eye, blonde hair and blue eyed. That does not give us an automatic pass, as many silly lost sheep think. Because he's black and we're black, everything is straight, there's no more work to do. We can lord that over the Gentiles. That mentality actually got our people in this situation. And so that mentality is not going to get them out of anything but get them deeper in trouble, in trouble with Jah, because Jah has revealed himself 
in the person of the King of Kings, of Kedemawi, Hila, Selassie, and his Christ, and in I and I. So, with that being understood, the fall of Babylon has already been announced, we know. There's a vision of the Lamb and the 144,000 in, in chapter chapter 14 of the book of Revelation. But I want to point your attention to this, so please take this take this down. In other words, write it down in your copy book. We gave you a demonstration, the last bit of, of, of a copy book. I know we have some other ones. That wasn't one of our best, but not just to show the best, but to show what we got. Um, there's some other copy books that I know we have around here that we can um, demonstrate, you know, what sort of, what sort of, um, uh, is in the next, it's in the next, uh, in the next um, area, but we, we showed you this before. This is a composition notebook. Go out, buy a couple of copies. They use them not that expensive. You understand? Definitely get them before the cost for everything is bound to go up. So, you know, um, um, don't be unprepared. In other words, get prepared. Get a couple of copies of this. Devote one of them to Sabbath studies. Devote the next one to, to Amharic. Even though in the Sabbath studies, maybe you'll dabble with a little bit of Amharic or practice makes perfect. You can write in it that which the Holy Spirit leads and guides you to write in it. You know, and so it's not about, you know, keeping it all neat or whatever. It's about noting and documenting as a, as a, as a reference point, you see. And there's something amazing that happens. It's like John teaches us by, by the word and especially by writing. He teaches something, there's a wiring mystically with our mind and even remembering things much better by writing them down. In the earlier days, I just shared this with the eye, I used to write entire verses, verses that I wanted to, that were important to me, that I found in the scripture. I would write down whatever the book was, let's say, Revelation chapter 14, where we're at, verse 12, you understand? And I would just write the verse down, here is the patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, or the faith of Jesus. That's a very important um, scripture verse right there. Another thing that um, we, we, we do to, to help us, and, and it's a good way to document, um, is use these sort, of, uh, these sort of cards right here. I, I can't tell you all the information on these cards. Like, for example, for this particular teaching that we're teaching right here, we had noted on the card some main notes about the Ten Commandments, about what it is in the Amharic, you know, writing down the Amharic, or even sometimes writing down the Hebrew on particular topical points, you know. So this is a secondary way to, um, like here is one on baptism, you know, on baptism. Um, here's a breakdown of Torah, or the Talmud, the Zohar, the Shinna, you know, and reminding ourselves through such um, means. We have a saying in among Ethiopian Hebrews. The saying in translation um, is translated as hands that don't write, don't live. Bamarinya, in the Amharic, we say, Yemai Sifu, Ijoch Ainoru, Yemai Sifu, they who don't write, Ijoch, hands. They, they don't live. They don't exist. They, in other words, to say they're not established. They're not. So hands must write. Those who, who, who know, teach. Those who don't know, learn. And some of this was contained on one of the oldest um, Amharic charts that we got out of um, um, from Ethiopia, and this chart was told me was used in the schools, 
during the time of his majesty. Now they've kind of redone things, but not restoring the foundations, but dabbling and experimenting with other kind of Western means. But that particular um, word comes from his majesty's time, that hands that don't write don't live. So it's very important for us to to write. Mm. Like we said, we're going to go to the board and study this, but we want to do a little something more, more just casual here. We just sit down for a moment and we say, let's just record this because we're thinking about these ideas, you know, and knowing that they're important ain't going to help us or my brothers and sisters unless we speak these ideas out. And we hope that other brothers and sisters will also, in a sense, get up on this just to communicate, you understand, know, to communicate and to, and, and to have no fear, you understand, know, of Babylon about speaking the truth. You know what I mean? We're not talking about, of course, there's things that they may not like, but it's within our religious and faith-based rights. You see, if we have rights and we don't use them, guess what, brothers and sisters, you lose them. Mm-hmm. Even with the cannabis, you see a lot of those issues are, I won't say glamorous issues, but are issues that, like, more hype issues. Everybody can get behind, like, yeah, we put up a video talking about marijuana, and of course, X amount of people that just like to smoke marijuana are going to check it out. But if we put a, put out a video about our religious rights, sacramental rights, or how it should be properly used, how many ones will be interested in that? Another thing we want to say to brothers and sisters out there: feel free, if you have the means and the can invest the time and and even resources in downloading our videos and some of them are like for example on Torah portions there may be two three videos on a particular Torah portion or a particular subject matter you understand but download these videos and 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 distribute them and share them it's important that we do whatever in our power to see to it that those who have not had the opportunity of hearing the good news have the opportunity to hear the good news. But brothers and sisters, don't force no ones and ones. I know there's people out there that you love and would love to get this, you see, but pray, you understand, as you minister to them. In other words, pray in your heart, pray beforehand that if the Almighty so wills that this message will get across to them. You understand? But don't violate their free will either. Because you know how it is, certain things we haven't accepted as individuals until until it was our time to accept it. And hopefully, when we do accept the truth, it's not too late. That's the main thing we keep saying because we know that many would have, 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 have missed the boat proverbially or, or would have missed Zion's train. But we're doing all in our power to see to it that we are not ones who have, 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 have held the message but have shared the message, put it out there, and also to encourage others, you understand, to both grow in the teachings and also to fellowship and to co-labor and to feel free to use your gifts and your callings for the service of the King of Kings and his Christ and in this society, the society of his majesty, the Lion and Judah society, all right? Mm. So with that being said, we pointed to this right here because it says, here is the patience of the saints. Here is the patience. So the saints have patience. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, the faith of Yeshua, Yehoshua. So what is meant by the, the commandments? We're speaking about the law, the law of Musa, the law of Moses. Galatians reminds us that the law is our schoolmaster, is our schoolmaster till Christ, till Christ um, come, or, or till our Christ consciousness, till our messianic mind state has become matured. And then we can see those things of the spirit. 
You know what I'm saying? Because we have now been, we have grown up. You know what I'm saying? We're not, we're not just like little, little baby, baby Jesuses, but we, we are like the man Christ. We have grown up to him. You see, so the, the process of learning the word is so crucial. We cannot overemphasize that because even the king of kings in his teachings also emphasizes, he says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. And we as Rastafari have to admit, we do not know the Bible, the scriptures, as we should. We know certain things. Granted, we do know certain things. And we know that Ethiopia and, and, and ancient Ethiopia is very strong on that living Bible. This is what gives us the testimony and even the boast and, and, and the pride in our history. But something has, has gone wrong. You know what I'm saying? Something has slipped off the track. And we're here to redeem it and to bring it forward. As I said, to bring it back, but really bring it forward. You, you see? So we're the generation that has the opportunity of bringing in the kingdom of the king of kings and his Christ, of restoring the divine monarchy. But there's a foundation that needs to be built on. You know, the ancient, as it says in, um, what is it, Amos. I think it's Amos 9 and 7. Let's just go there. This is how we rightly divide the word of truth. Amos 9 and 7. And hopefully many of you all are, are studying these verses. Go there with I and I, you know. Um, when you're ready to watch these videos, if you're serious about it, get your Bible. You know what I'm saying? Get your, you know, get your copy book. Get your notebook. Get your Bible. You know what I'm saying? When we point out certain scriptures, get those scriptures. Look them up for yourself. Go on the Internet. You'll find more information there, too. You know? Um, and, 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 and document it and note it for yourself. See, when we do this work right here, you know, each of our copy books is our own. It basically is almost as a testimony to how diligent we are. It's like in school. It's like in class. And this is what this is. This is basic class. This is discipleship. These teachings here are mainly geared for those beginners, those newcomers. This is why we spend so much time really speaking towards encouraging and encouragement. You understand? Because it's easy for ones to get discouraged. You know, whether it's with the, the language, some have gotten, and some might think, oh, it's too difficult, I'll never get it. You have to ban that from your mind, but if you focus enough on the scriptures and what the, what the divine word is in your heart and your mind, and you commit it to your heart and your mind, you will have the spiritual strength to even overcome those, those, those sensible feelings you understand? Know that may make you think you're not worthy. You understand? Know or you can't do it. Or it's too difficult. But the key is patience. It's patience. You know, we've been thinking about how can we put all this in a vid and, and do it almost like one time and, and it, it will be the, you know, the, the, like the end all and be all. But that was, that was an ira irrational thought. You understand? Know because what we're saying is that we know this is going to take patience. This is going to take us probably having to go over it step by step. You know what I'm saying? Go over certain things again and again. But even in that process, the teacher or the one who is the teacher in Christ and through Christos is learning too. So we say that to even encourage those of you out there because there's some of you all out there, you know, who, who have that call as well. You see what I'm saying? Who have that call. And when we look at this now in the context of where we've been studying in Scripture, namely Exodus and Exodus chapter 18, when in chapter 18, well, let's get Amos right here. Amos says this, um, Amos says this, Amos 9.11. Amos 9.11 says, In that day, because this speaks about the future kingdom blessing." that the Lord's return, Abba Caduce's return, Yeshua's return, and the reestablishment. There's going to be a reestablishment of the Davidic monarchy, even the monarchy of Kedemawi Haile Selassie. Know it for sure. Know it for sure. 
in that day will I rise or raise up the tabernacle of David, the tabernacle of David that is fallen. We look at Ethiopia, we look at his majesty, and, and ones will tell us, oh, revolution, oh, his majesty was, was, was over, was over, um, what they call it, over, overthrown. No such thing. He stepped down. You understand? He said, the revolution is good for the people, I'm for the revolution. He did it within his power. You understand? Within his power. You, you know? Um, that is fallen, but the tabernacle of David has fallen. That, that, um, that 3,000 year old dynasty in the Chopia in 74 and 75 fell and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. This is what we're studying. This is what we study the good is. This is what we study the days of old. Because how was it? You know, saying not just what happened, but, but meditate on the principles or the principles of it, that they may possess the remnant of Adam, of Edom, and all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth, that doeth this, that doeth this. So, in Revelation, it's saying that the patience, that the Kedusan, the true holy ones, you see even the Nazarite vow, if you go to um, Numbers chapter 6, it says if a man or a woman seeks to separate themselves to the Lord, to Yahweh. They shall be kedus. They shall be holy. So there, even in Old Testament, even in the Nazarite vow, we have the idea of the saints or the kedusan, which is beautiful, simple, perfect. It's there in the word. That 5,000 years ago, some historians say, say that was. You see, that was even well before the establishment of the Davidic a covenant, Al Kidan, with David that was fulfilled in Kedamawi Haile Salase. We have the idea of holiness in the Nazarite vow as an example of what it says right here in Revelation 14 and 12. Here's the patience of the Kedusan, of the Holy Ones. Here are they. Here are they that do what? They keep. What do they keep? They keep the commandments of God. So how dare some of these counterfeit pseudo so-called Christian, these chins, Christian, you know saying, and churchins, and the pastors, so-called pastors and preachers, say that the law was done away with and give the people the false impression that as Christians, we are lawless. As followers of Yeshua, Jesus Christos, we are lawless. There is no law. We found time and time again in the word that contradicts them, even and especially in the mouth of the Savior. So we are to keep two things if we are to be those saints, those overcomers, the commandment of Jah, the commandment of God, and the faith, the correct faith of Jesus, because there's the false faith of the man of sin. You understand? And of, of, of Antichrist, you know, and the counterfeit Christianity. So we have to know who the true Christ is, and the only way is through the Word and through the Spirit. And then we can judge by God and reality or history, you see? So we can look at various so-called Christians. For example, let's look at the Roman Catholics. They just had a big thing go on over the weekend. Did you see how significant that was? 22 cardinals, which are the so-called princes of the church. Don't you know what just went on there? Where we're at right now in our Torah portion, last week's portion, um, the 17th side of Yotor. You understand? Yotor. What did it discuss right there? Let's go there right now. Now we can go to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus chapter 19 and bring this teaching forward. Um, Exodus chapter, actually 18. And 18 says, Thou shalt, it says, it says, it says, it says, um, Thou, 
and thou shalt teach, verse 20, 18 and 20, and thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt shew them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. This is, this is going to become a main focus of this society and what we're teaching in this season right now. And this is why we put out the word and the call to the disciples and discipleship and those who have sent in applications. We've tried to reach out via the Internet and try to bring together at least the students in the class, you know what I'm saying, where we can communicate more directly vis-a-vis -vis the online and even network some call conferencing and other, other um, fellowships like that. But the first thing is the teaching. You see, the teaching, the apostles' teaching goes before fellowship. And we know that order, just document this, document this, because it's very important to have. This is how we can build until successfully, you understand, and faithfully. And the Holy Spirit will lead us, guide us, and bless us. We're doing that which is according to his word. Um. It says right here, verse 42, it says, and they, this is where the first church, this is the first church, right? The first church, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. The doctrine is the teaching and fellowship. So first come the teaching, and the teaching opens the way to the wendamamachnet, to brotherhood, or in King James translates it, fellowship. And in the breaking of bread, that's the communion. You understand that sharing, you could say the cup, the bread, and the wine, and in prayers, and in prayers. So this is very, very important right here, you understand, because it's interesting, because um, there were about 3,000 people after the commandments come down, right, um, and Moses was up there a while. You recall the scene where the golden calf. 3,000, remember, about 3,000 people perished. But then in the New Testament, we find 3,000, you understand, 3,000 upon whom the Holy Spirit came. So it shows, when we look at uh, Pentecost, you see, at Pentecost, which is in the New Testament, Pentecost, but in the Old Testament, that's harvest, the harvest festival. But in Genesis, and uh, not Genesis, in Exodus, that is where the commandments came down on Mount Sinai, on Mount Sinai. So we have this idea of, of the, the fourth of the seven high holy days. There are seven high holy days. And, and, and um, the Rastafari sabbatical study or the, or, or, the, or the weekly Torah portion, the Orita Minbab, Kuter Asara Sementenya, or the 18th, which is Mishport team for this present seven days. But we're linking the 17th, last week's portion, in the verses and in the chapters because in the text they go together. There's a harmony. And we didn't have opportunity in the previous week to really go through the, the commandments as we would have liked to because we was trying to maybe find one kind of presentation, but as we started to go over our notes and our studies, we began to recognize, you know, this has to be done in, in this almost has to be a whole lesson. Then we recognize that, you know, if we were a community and if, if this was like a college or a teaching, this would be almost a whole semester. You understand? The whole, one could study it for their undergraduate and still would not exhaust the meaning and, 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 the, and the richness of knowledge and, 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 and the purity of application. That's the key really for I and I. You know, I'm looking, I already have faith that his word is true, and, I, and I've discovered so much in his word that it doesn't surprise me that there's more to discover. You understand? And what I love is when it confirms or affirms what, and builds on what I already knew before, and I might have thought, okay, I, I know that. And then you recognize something else now, you learn now as you go over that material again, and it builds on what you knew before in a way that you could not anticipate it. 
You know, that's what that's when it becomes mystical. You know, and I I, will, I I pray that my brothers and sisters also have that have that experience for themselves. You know, I have a real jaw spiritual experience with the word. Then you too will know what. I and I say, and what His Majesty has said, for my part, I glory in the Bible. Then you really begin to recognize that old saying that if you want to hide something from somebody, especially a Negro, you know, a nigger, you put it in the book. You understand? Because we generally have been, have been either miseducated, kept illiterate, and taught not to read. You understand? Taught not to read. Remember, Malcolm X taught himself how to read. You understand, starting out with what? The dictionary. And he was incarcerated. Do we have to lose our freedom? Do you have to lose your freedom, you understand, and end up in jail and then begin to really study and then begin to use your mind and use your spirit and rise above that lower, that lower level out of bondage? I mean, t t the choice is yours and the choice is I and I's. But here Moses... What what occurred with the Vatican? Because this is this is all in this present time, and this probably could be historical if if it's looked back on in the future or look looked at in the future. Um, February we we know about Whitney Houston and and if Jai Wills may Jai have mercy on her soul. I mean, I, you know that's a whole different subject matter right there. But just for the record, this is what has happened over the past week or two, you understand? And, and a cardinal from this area, uh, or, or Archbishop Dolan, he went out to Rome with about 21 other um, um, Catholic uh, bishops, and the Pope, this Pope, who's going to be the shortest Pope, he, he's going he's gonna, to, not the shortest, but he's going to stay there for a short time. You know, we can really anticipate that what they said that there will be about um, seven to eight ones. He's like the seventh since the Lateran, since the coming of the King of Kings. He would be the seventh pope. And they said that there would be an eighth pope if we look at the seven and eight similar to um, the, the horns on the beast. Some interpret it like that, that this present pope. But anyway, they elected... 22 princes of the church. Symbolically, what the, the Catholic Church did is what Exodus speaks of right here. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws and shall show them the way wherein they must walk and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men. So they are considered to be those who are those able men, right? Such as fear God fear, have a reverence of God, men of truth, hating covetousness, hating what's not yours. You know, that means you see somebody's got something, that's good for them. It's a, it's a nice thing. It's a good thing. You know, if somebody has a woman, oh, she's, yeah, she's, she's attractive, whatever, but you're not going to be like, oh, she should be with me. You know, that, that, or that's part of the covetousness or that person thing, I, I want their thing. You see, and this is, these are the things that the pastor and the preacher is not teaching. These are the things that the majority of them, I know there's a few, and some of you all might be in churches, fortunately, that there are these few, but they're so few and far between, you understand, and the work still is so great. And place over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds and rulers of fifty and rulers of tens, and let them judge the people at all seasons. In other words, let them be responsible in the community. Let them have responsibility in the society. And this is where we are in the line of society, where we now need men of, able men, in other words, able, able brothers and sisters, such as Reverence Ja. They are brothers and sisters of truth. They hate covetousness, yammy yammy and uh, gravelicious, as ones would say. You understand? And they have a responsibility, you understand, over, over the other brothers and sisters to also teach them as well. You know, we have to restore the moral theocracy. You don't hear many, except maybe in Bingy and in, and, and in certain circles, but one time the general message of the Rastafari was 
moral theocracy. But the key of moral theocracy is the Bible. And, and, and the particular um, center point of that, you know, saying the center grooves of that key is right here in the book of Exodus and is the commandment. It's the commandment, the ten words. The ten words, very, very important. So um, Moses, now when we get to 19, as we, as we went over previously, um, there's a preparation there. You understand? There's a, there's a particular preparation, as well as Yahweh speaks about how if they had obeyed my voice, if they would obey, be obedient, and keep my covenant, then they would be a particular treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and they would be a, to him a kingdom of priests. Now, that's the very same thing if, if, we, if we scroll forward, right? If we scroll forward to Revelation, we look at Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 and 6. And if you compare Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 and 6, and you go to Revelation, let's go to Revelation chapter, chapter 1. Chapter 1, verses, uh, um, you could say, verses 5 and 6. Wow, ain't that something? Exodus chapter 19, 5 and 6. Then you compare that with Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. I hope, you, I hope brothers and sisters, I hope you, you, you're getting this and, you, and you're seeing it for yourself, verifying it for yourself. Here it says, And from Jesus Christos, or Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, to him that loved us and washed us from our sin in his own blood, verse 6, and hath made us kings and priests. Now, that phrase, kings and priests, really is, if properly translated, a, a kingdom, like a government, a kingdom of the priests. That is theocratic. So when we speak about Rastafari and even, and sometimes Naya Bingi, but really Rastafari as the moral, as a moral theocracy or as a theocratic government, it is not just breeze in the wind. It is the Holy Spirit inspiration to I and I. So, so let us note that as well and meditate on its significance and have made us kings and priests to God and his Father. So Yeshua HaMoshiach, he makes us a kingdom of priests to who? To God and his Father, to Abba Kedus, to Kedus Abatachin, to Abba. You understand? To Abba Kedus, to, to his Holy Father, our Holy Father, to God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion. Because he is king of kings, dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now, when we say Amen, in spirit and truth, we are saying Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMoshiach. How do we know that? Go to 3 and 14 of Revelation to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, right? Now, the church of the Laodiceans, it is the seventh of the churches mentioned in Revelation. We spoke on this before, and we point out Walter Viet. Um, Walter Viet, a minister, a preacher, who has, um, I think, amazing discoveries is what his, his video series, and a lot of them are out there on some of the different um, video playing platforms. I think even the YouTubes has some of them from being posted like on the Google videos, but now Google uh, owns YouTubes or whatever the situation is. But anyway, Walter Viet's videos are out there. I think we have a video, too, of his um, the churches, the seven churches of Revelation. You, you must see, it's a must see, seven churches of Revelation, because when you watch this video, you'll find yourself actually, as at least we found ourselves, and we would encourage you to, you watch it, maybe just watch it just to check it out. Then watch it again, and you'll have to like pause it, there's some verses, and you have to take notes of it. It's very important, because as you take notes of it, it may be some work, your hand may get a little tired, but later on, but later on, you start to notice it start to come together, and then when you're reading this book and looking around and studying history and 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 and, and present reality, your eyes will be open. You'll be able to see 
the truth, Christ consciously, you'd be able to see what's really going on. And there's nothing more beautiful than that. And you'd be telling others around you who maybe maybe are still blind, still dumb, deaf, and, and, and blind, you say, hey, did you see such and such? And, and they won't get it. But then when you speak to your spiritual brothers and sisters, they see it and they can add on to, to that as well. And then you begin to recognize that some things people don't get because they, they, they have not received a love of the truth. You understand? And um, that's sad, but that's a reality. This is, but we have to be separated from all of that to him. So when we are truly separated to do his will and, and keeping the Sabbath, remembering the Sabbath, we said the Sabbath is that, is that, is that test word. That's the, that's the test word right there. That's the beginning of that process of becoming truly a caduce, a caduce son, a saint, one set apart. doesn't make you higher than anybody else. No, it qualifies you, you understand, as one who is set apart to the will of God in Christ and God and in Christ's eye. You understand? And that's all that really matters, you know, when we come down to, you know, to the reality because him who is the life giver, you understand, so not. So nobody else should really matter. But we do have to put in the work. You understand? Put in the work. Some say it's not about work. It's just about faith, 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 faith. But the scriptures teach us that faith without works is dead. Even Paul says we have to work out our salvation with fear and with trembling. See, and the trembling is when we really get into the word and our conscience is opened up. We really recognize, you know, the pettiness you know, of, of, of a lot of things that, that we have placed a lot of value on. And we start to recognize even even our own need for a Savior, you understand, and our own wrongfulness, you understand, to ones and ones. We begin to recognize our nature, you understand, who we are, the real state of our soul, you know. And for a lot of us and for a lot of people, that's, that's, a, scary, that's a scary place. So what a lot of folks do, Either they deaden it with so-called pharmaceutical drugs, some hard drugs, or alcohol, or party life, or, or fantasy, you know, living in the image of the beast or something else, and, and they run away from it, you see, because um, they don't want to change, you know. They don't want to change, or they don't want to forgive, or they don't want to recognize the truth, or they don't have a love of the truth, because like attract like, you understand, you know, and though... Ones may be your own so-called flesh and blood. You'll notice that the spirit is as different as day and night. That's a reality. That's why Christ said many of one's enemies will be those of his own household, of a man's own household. And this doesn't mean that one is to make enemies of your household. But if that reality should come upon you, don't make it seem like it's something strange. You understand? Instead, acknowledge that Jah is true, you understand, and then pray and ask him, well, what am I to do, and wait patiently, wait for his answer, you understand, because sometimes people pray and, and, and say, what should I do, and they already have an idea in mind, and they think Jah has told them to do what they had in mind, but they didn't wait for an answer. You see, that's when we talk about prayer and meditation. When you pray, if you have an opportunity and make an opportunity, something just to be in meditation. After you make your request, just be silent, be quiet, focus on your breath, just breathe, just just meditate, just 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 meditate, just be patient. A lot of folks can't do that. You understand because you know they are too 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 worldly, and the world has lied to them, and they believe the lies of the world over the truth of Jah Word. But to the angel of the church of Laodiceans, so Laodiceans is that seventh church. And, and, and it represents, um, it's interesting when you look at the, the church of Laodicea. Because Laodicea is that seventh church. And the name of that particular seventh church means mean, um, justice, some say justice to the people. I like to interpret that meaning the judgment of the people. Because that seventh church, this is like, this is the age we're in right now. The end of the Gentile world dominion or the so-called um, Naus Ardo Seclorum or the, the Nouveau World Seclorum. 
um, Nouveau Auto Seclor actually um, is connected with the church age, the end of the church age. This is, this is one of the reasons why we're witnessing, you know, the church, the modern church, so um, apostate, so falling away from what's in the word and contradicting, you understand, all of John's teaching. I mean, overall, there's remnant out there, but one key thing is most churches don't keep the Shabbat. Most don't keep the send that, you know, and, and, and that's a key thing right there because they demonstrate something in that. Though many of the churches will say they're not Catholic churches, but they, they are following the Roman authority or the beast power because it was them who flipped it and did away, you understand, in their own man-made commandment with keeping God's commandment, which was the Sabbath day, which is another part of the lesson that's that's tied into this teaching. So it says, These things say is the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Verse 15, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. You know, when we read this, don't think about somebody else over there, because like in the, in the Red Letter Bible, they tell us in the Red Letter Bible, the Red Letter is, is, is Christ speaking. Think about that word being spoken to you. You know, if you really want to want to want to inspire and even provoke your own spiritual growth, think of this word as being spoken to you. See, it's easy a lot of time when there's a judgment word from Jah to look at the next person, you know, and say, yeah, that's that's that person over there. But put yourself in in the line of fire. You know, it's carry your cross. You know, even on the spiritual and mental level. Take this as, as, as his saying to us. He says, he knows our works, that we are neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. You know what, the, what it's like to be? Where, where one is, is just lukewarm? It's, it's like right now we have a lukewarm generation of Rastafari. You know, a lukewarm generation. Not saying all are lukewarm, but overall, it's, it's very much lukewarm. There's ones out there that are not cold or hot for, for Rastafari, you understand, for repatriation, for Ethiopia, for coming out of Babylon. No, they want to go up and down in Babylon, and, you know, because of dread and, and dreadlocks of style now, you understand, and people are a little bit into um, multiculturalism or they like reggae music, and, and they're getting a ride off of that, but they are not cold nor hot. So we have to ask, examine ourselves, as the Bible says. Know thyself actually means to examine yourself. You understand? Um, rasahin, um, uh, fetesh, you know, is test your head. Test yourself. You understand? Test yourself. And, and if one don't test themselves, that means you already know you fail, you know? But if you test yourself and find that you, you're a little bit weak on this or that, guess what? You can strengthen that. But if you don't test yourself and, and, and you make believe that I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm, I'm good, I'm straight, you know what I'm saying? And then you really get tested. You know, you can get broken. So test yourself. Check how you stand. At least you fall. These are all, these are all the mantras and then the meditation, the true meditation you understand, of the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, you know. So then, because thou art lukewarm, so he's talking about ones who are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot. This generation now, this church, this church, this generation now is, is this lukewarm generation that Christ is speaking of. He says, I will spew thee out of my mouth. On a mystical level, you can look at um, uh, the tsunami and even Hurricane Katrina as, as symbolic of this spewing out, this water, this flood, because it, it connects with the, 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 that end of the, the, the aeon, the end of the alam, that end of the world, that end of the age. It says, because thou sayest, I am rich. Sounds like this, 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 these Negroes, the lost sheep in this time, like they're rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, 
you know. So we see black folks now, not all, but we got a lot of, a lot many more black um, millionaires and probably even billionaires now. You know, we see them. They are so, so-called celebrities. You know, they're the ones that just have a first name. They don't even have to have a first and last name. You know, you talk about them like they're your friends on your block or so forth and so on, yet most of them wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be seen dead with you. You understand? Basically, unless you are one of them. But this is the generation. These are the idols. You know, these are the idols right now. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness doth not appear, do not appear, and anoint thy eyes of eye salve, salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, check that out, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore, not jealous, but be zealous therefore, and repent and have a change of mind and think differently. Now, this is the last word for a couple of chapters. I, I, I think, I think this, this is where, this is the last three verses that Christ basically says, uh, almost until you get to the light of the book of Revelation. And the Schofield Study Bible has this um, subscribed as place and attitude. It's the place and the attitude of Christos at the end of the church age. Let me show this to you. Let me put a put a mark here and, and, and show this to you because I want I want you all to be able to see this to see this for yourself. You understand? I want you to be able to see this for yourself. You know let, let me use this this here we go right here. Here's You see that right there? Let me try to hold it right there. You see that right there? You see what it says? That's what we're just reading up there, right? The place and the attitude. The place and the attitude of the Mashiach, of Moshiach, of Messiah. The place and attitude of Messiah at the end of the church age. See a lot of the, the what's interesting. A lot of the church is not telling you that the church age is ending. Why? Because they still want to, you know, they they still want to keep up the, 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 the that that illusion. And most likely, most of them don't even know. You understand? Most likely, they, they don't even know. They're not they're not thinking about revelation. They're not really truly preaching revelation. There are few and far in between churches that's really preaching this book of revelation as it should be preached. And all of y'all who are in church that don't preach this book of Revelation and don't refer to are missing out on a blessing because in Revelation 1 it says, Bless is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. So it says, Bless is he that readeth. So one who even reads, there's a blessing for even reading this word. It didn't say that you had to be all a scholar or a scholar of it, but if you read it, you see, if you read this word, if you hear the words of the prophecy, if you keep those things which are written therein, guess what? The Holy Spirit, the Memphis Kedus, the Ruach HaKodesh, you understand, can work with you and work through you because you have something to work with. But if you don't even, if you don't read these words, if you don't hear the words, you understand? If you don't keep that, that means protect, preserve, you, you know what I mean? Um, almost like commit it to your heart and your mind. Then the Holy Spirit can't, can't guide you. It can't guide you. So the, so the first step is reading. It's, it tells you right in the third verse of Revelation that reading is important, that reading is fundamental. Now, the, the, the place and the attitude of Christ at the end of the church age. So I just showed it to you, the, the end of the church age. And there's more on this um, in, in the study of, 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 of Revelation in particular that, that gives more of the, of the details. And we can see many signs already. But what we're going to do is focus on the place and the attitude of Christ 
at the end of the church age. So this 2012 time we're in, is 2012 time the end of the church age, is it? It says, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door. He stands at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh, not to the one who's overcome. So we have to seek to be overcomers, not to be overcome. To him that overcometh, like the one who conquers, the one who prevails, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. This is very important, brothers, because this passage is in harmony with Luke chapter 1, verse 32 to 33, Matthew chapter 19, verse 28, Acts chapter 2, verses 30, verse 34, verse 35, and Acts chapter 15, verses 14 to 16. And it's conclusive in, 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 in a way of prosecuting the cause of the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. It is conclusive that Christos the Moshiach is now seated upon his own throne. The Davidic covenant, and, and, and here's the connection now with Ethiopia, of Ethiopia, Ethiopia, the promises of God through the prophets and the angel Gabriel concerning the messianic kingdom await fulfillment. Now when this was written, this is before the revelation of Ketamawi Haile Selassie. You understand? But now when you put it into its context, you can see very clearly that still it fulfills the word. So we have that link with the Davidic covenant, with the promises of God that were through the prophets, the Nabiya, which is the second part of our Torah portion, reading and feeding what's known as the Haftara. And I hope, brothers and sisters, though we haven't spend much time on that, but we hope to step up on the Haftorah portion of the reading and feeding of the prophets. But hopefully you're getting familiar with a lot of these prophetical words. Even if one doesn't fully understand it or all the aspects of it, just getting familiar with the word, just, just like um, making an investment in it, to read the scriptures, to make an investment in it. It's like a prerequisite. And the angel Gabriel concerning the messianic kingdom await fulfillment, await fulfillment. Now, what's interesting is that after, after we deal with um, this portion of scripture, we're going to find that um, in the next chapter of Revelation, Revelation 4, that it says this call, the call to come up hither, it clearly to indicate the fulfillment of First Thessalonians, some say chapter 4, verses 14 to 17, the word church does not occur, does not again occur in the Revelation, which is interesting. So we have these seven churches, and, and the word church doesn't, doesn't occur again, because we're not going into an age of, 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 of church but we're going into the age of the kingdom of the king of kings and Christ. We're going into the kingdom age. We're going into the, the, the um, millennial, the millennium, in other words. The eighth millennium, we know it ethiopically. And um, there's more on that. But um, there are seven days. We're, we're in that seven-day time period. We, we, we we're in that seven-day time period. Or... We can say we are moving into it. You understand? We're still looking at the signs and the manifestation and studying the word to see where we're at. But we know that there are seven days. And when we say seven days, a day for a year. So 2012 opens up a seven-day period of time. You see? So either we can say 2012, take that year to 2013, and then begin to count seven. You understand? Or we can include 2012 in that seven. Well, we're going to see some very definite. We already have seen some of them, 
but we're going to see more very definite fulfillment of these biblical prophetic signs that Yah willing we will have an opportunity to touch on what some of them will be but um, Jeremiah chapter 4 from verse uh, 23 to the end of that chapter actually gives a good sign because as it was what in the beginning so shall it be in the end because there is a cycle of the age there's a cycle, a dispensation, you understand, is granted. And although the Almighty is being exceedingly gracious to us, we cannot um, discount the grace or waste the grace, waste the opportunity that we have, Yovas. And this is why um, the Shabbat day, the Senbet day is, is very, very important. So... Let us continue to go forward on this, and we're going to pause for the cause, I think, right here, because we want to keep these, uh, these reasonings um, topical, you know, topical. We still are addressing um, the commandments, but we want to spend some time on showing what some of the connections um, what some of the connections really are here in the scriptures between this and that. You understand? Know Showing the connections. Because as you start to see some of the connectivity when we point out a verse or a couple of verses here in the context here and here and then show something that's happening in so-called the real world or historically, this might hopefully inspire ones to, to seek out of the book and to read. You know what I'm saying? And, and to take these teachings and, and keeping of the Shabbat and the Torah portion reading and feeding the Orit Nabab, to take that um, very much more seriously. You understand? It's, it's very important because, see, the glory, you see, 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 glory is more than just a word. Mm -hmm. Just like when Christ said that he stands at the door, that door is not just like, outside your door like you see in those pictures, those Jesus pictures. But he's standing at the door of this new age, at the door of this new age. You see, now, whether this, this, this door is December um, 21st, 2012, but we know with the heavens, since the heavens are his, the heavens is his, his clock, you see? And therefore, if the heavens really are lining up, and the procession of equinoxes are lining up, and the heavens are lining up, and that Nibiru or Kokeb is what it is, then it shows that we are moving into that time. This is how we would know, because even Christ said um, that there would be signs in the heavens. Mm -hmm. well, there will be signs in the heaven. It says before that great, and dreadful day of the Lord, because the great and dreadful day of the Lord is not one of light, but scripturally speaking, it's one of darkness. So what we have um, seen in, 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 in a vision is a total global blackout, a total global blackout. Uh, technology, can you imagine? If all technology just, just, just crashed, if, 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 if it went earthquakes and other things emerge. I mean, there were already tremors in California that they try and dismiss as a minor thing. But all of these are signs, brothers and sisters. All these are signs. The real key is whether one will be prepared for that new age. And, and, and the preparations in spirit, you know what I'm saying? The preparations in soul, you know? He who depends on the body is a fool. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the physical. In other words, the fire cycle. But build up your spirit, build up your heart, build up your mind in the truth of the King of Kings and his Christ, and you too will be one of the overcomers. Stay tuned for the next part of this teaching, brothers and sisters. Burhan inna salam, light and peace, from the King of Kings and his Christ. Shalom, your brother, Wendem Yadam.